temperature. There are five Mediterraneans in the world. Obviously the one in Europe, which we all know about. And then the only other one in the northern hemisphere is where we're standing now. The three in the southern hemisphere are Western Australia, Santiago, Chile, and South Africa. And those regions grow more diversity, more higher yields, and uh, just have a temperate climate that makes growing I, how do you explain it? If people, I think, I don't know if I told you this, people ask me all the time, how do I farm organically? How do I do it? And I go, well, I farm in paradise. So <laughs> it makes it a little easier. <laughs> this is, uh, my son was in Calabasas yesterday. Um, he said it was 92 there in Calabasas. <laughs> this ocean breeze, does anyone live on the other side of the Caneo grade? Do you, do, you live in? Agora. Yeah. So what's the temperature in Agora? Nice. <laughs> you know what? You're still in the Mediterranean. It's not that bad. It's not, that bad. It's not like yeah. Santa Clarita, Palm Springs. Two years ago we came from Woodland Hills at 111. Yeah, yeah. To Channel Islands Harbor at 69. <laughs> in one hour. Yeah, yeah, exactly. In one hour. But... And that is why we have a year-round growing season, and it, it's interesting because you get too close to the ocean, there's certain crops that don't like the salt air. But we really are just on the borderline here. Oxnard will be fogged in right now, but Kimria will have the sun. Um, and this is just a perfect growing region. That's Point Magoo about nine miles that way, and the Ventura River is about 12 miles that way. And this is 40,000 acres. Uh, it's the smallest ag region in uh, ca uh, California. Those are the foothills of the Camriel Hills, and that's where I grew up, just overlooking this wonderful farm plain. And, uh, you know, when I was a child, I didn't realize what potential this climate and soil has. Um, what's neat about the Oxnard Plains for about 30,000 years, it was just draining from the Santa Clara River, Cayugas Creek, uh, you know, San Joaquin, 2.5 million acres, was all full of salt water. And uh, so about 30,000 years ago, there was some cataclysmic event that just drained all this soil and it layered it and layered it, and this is a huge alluvial plain, and um, it is the deepest topsoil in the world. So you got the perfect soil and you got the perfect climate. Yes, I can grow organically here. <laughs> it's a little easy. It's uh, there are challenges, and, and people get um, what do I want to say locked into a program. Uh, that they grew up with all their lives or they grow up with, you know, their fathers. And, and um, I am so sure that transition happens when it comes to agriculture. Because uh, my great-grandfather was a sheep farmer from Ireland who came out here in 71, well, actually 1867, and then ended up in Oxnard in 1871 and he started raising cattle 
and um, he had 11 children and four of them were sons and they took the cattle ranching operation and turned it into a dairy farm and we had three different dairies which my dad grew up on a dairy farm because one of my great-grandfather's son was my grandfather my grandfather had four kids <clears throat> one of those kids was my dad he grew up on a dairy farm converted his agricultural background into row crops lima beans and sugar beets and they started uh, the Oxnard sugar beet factory and the uh, lima bean warehouses and then I grew up row on a row crop farm and um, so I, I know our history it's all about change and uh, that's something farmers don't want to hear about but they all kind of accept in the end and uh, you have to go with the flow things change all the time um, I'm an organic farmer and that is you know truly it's in my heart my soul I love growing without pesticides but also a big part of it is because of demand we uh, uh, in Southern California I started doing the farmer markets in 92 and for about three years I listened to these people come up to me and ask me if my product was organic so I'm a slow learner and after three years <laughs> I finally decided to go certified organic and I've been that way since 95 and we haven't looked back we we find that there's a good demand for organic product especially local in season fresh and uh, that's what we're doing here that's what it's all about I I'm gonna talk to you now about how we do it and instead of uh, you gotta remember I grew up born in 1952 and basically it was lima beans in the summer and sugar beets in the winter and um, then in the 60s 70s and 80s there was more diversification there were more broccoli and cauliflower and lettuce and celery and tomatoes and then uh, in the mid to late 80s the big big companies from Salinas and other areas came here because it was still an agricultural region and they obviously heard of the yields that this area gets. We get higher yields than any other place in California, uh, maybe excepting Salinas Valley. Salinas Valley is 250,000 acres. Again, we're 40,000. We are small, but um, we still do great when it comes to farming. The only other region that could have been better than us, and in 1954 was the largest uh, United States ag region in United States was Los Angeles County which doesn't grow much anymore but uh, they were full of row crops and dairies and cattle also um, so converting to organic meant for me you can't grow just one crop you uh, again I, I'm involved with the direct marketing program which um, started in 1978 uh, I think it started under Jerry Brown legalize roadside stands, farmer markets, direct marketing to restaurants. And that program has really uh, catapulted the farmer market educational base to customers and eating in season and eating local. So um, I, I learned very early uh, after many, many mistakes. <laughs> it's always my best teacher experience. Um, you have to be diversified if you're going to be an organic farmer. The, uh, my program here is I plant three acres once a month of 50 different things. And that changes with the seasons. And that doesn't include my strawberries, flowers, legumes, heirloom tomatoes, and my pumpkin patch. So I am the most confused farmer I know. I just want everybody, nobody's more confused. Our farm is 300 acres, uh, 250 acres of it is certified organic. I farm 30 acres, and of that 30 acres, there's about 15 acres of vegetable row crops, about six acres of strawberries, and what am I leaving out? Heirloom tomatoes, pumpkins, permanent flowers, uh, cover crops, and uh, you know, when I start using terms I take for granted, tell me, does everyone know what a cover crop is? 
No? Good. Actually, a cover crop is something you grow for the soil. Typically, you don't harvest cover crops. It's to put carbon matter into the ground, and most cover crops are legumes, nitrogen fixers. Legumes take nitrogen out of the air and put it into the soil. So, so you, you cycle that. Yeah, anytime you can grow a cover crop, you're making your soil very happy. Um, that's kind of using that as your fertilizer. Exactly, exactly, exactly. What percentage of the year? As often as I can, but because uh, it's a luxury and it costs money to do that, um, I don't do it enough. But I grow lots of legumes. Now, the legumes that I grow, like beans and peas and um, favas and uh, lots of other different legumes, we harvest. But again, they're taking nitrogen out of the air, putting it in the soil. My lima beans, my fava beans, my peas. Um, yeah, it's, it's really nice to grow. I'm getting ready to put, uh, see that implement right there, that spring tooth. I'm going to put in about an acre and a half of cover crops there that will grow for about three months. We'll turn it into like a green maze for Halloween for the kids. And then we will plow it in and put strawberries. No, it's not. No, it's not. Anyway, um, yeah, my program is, we, we've got it down now. We, we've learned more cover cropping, more legumes, lots of flowers, mix it up with the vegetables. Um, you gotta have strawberries. Uh, try and grow things in season. I, out of the 50 things I grow at any one time, I only grow four things on a year round basis. And that is strawberries, beets and carrots, and my array of lettuces. Well, isn't that an interesting change? I, I, I'm just saying, I'm living here in Ventura County for about 19 years, and when I first came out here, you had strawberries for a couple of months that would come out. And oh yeah, they oh yeah. They up through June, July, yep. and that was it. Well, everybody needs to understand, growing strawberries at sea level is a modern miracle. Strawberries come from alpine regions, and then about 60 years ago, they genetically engineered them to grow at lower level elevations. And then also about 60, 50 years ago, they genetically engineered them to produce year round. I mean, there is a season for everything. Every time you walk into Vons and Albertsons and you see everything all the time, every day of the year, that's a modern miracle. Things really do have seasons, everything you see. And that's my, biggest educational point I make to everybody. Eat what's in season. Um, you know, I have a lot of greenhouse growers and they're not going to like me saying this, but I love tomatoes in season. Try and eat tomatoes in the winter or spring. Well, be my guest, but the difference between eating them in season in the summer and fall may, may change your mind. If no one else can. Um, eating strawberries in the fall when they're in season in the spring. Have fun. They're more expensive. They're sprayed more. And they don't taste as good. It's all about the season. And trying to eat local. I think that's a big part of it. I think they've done studies. The average food product in your store comes 1,500 miles away. Your carrots, your... I mean, eating peaches, plums, and nectarines in February, where they come from another hemisphere, don't get me going. Now I'm getting political. Uh-oh, I better say, yeah, I, better say right <laughs> I want us to take a little walk. I want to show you. Uh, is that okay? Can I put this back? Let's go this way. I want to practice for our other tours, huh? Oh, crap. What happened to Billy's? Is that just too much? Did it get washed out or? Yeah. There you go. <laughs> I don't have to worry about the sound. And the airplane doesn't. I'll stop you if it is. No problem. No problem. Um, thank you. I was going to. <laughs> Uh, 
Uh, my memory bank is... <laughs> no, he was asking some pretty good questions walking over here. Um, I want to go into that word sustainability uh, because you were asking about kids and secession and, and all that. Um, please, if any word makes me the hairs on the back of my neck raise up, uh, I think the word sustainability is kind of like the word organic in the 80s. Everybody was using that word and everybody had their own definition. And when I hear farmers say they're sustainable, it makes me go, well, wait a minute. You're not organic, but you call yourself sustainable. I have been taught the word sustainable means it's the three E's. You gotta remember the three E's. Equitable, equity, equity, environment, and economic. So equitably means that you are paying your workers a fair living wage, which no farmers in this county do. Uh, fair living wage in Ventura County is 14 or $15 an hour. And the average rate wage here for ag workers is minimum, $8 an hour. So I do pay my workers a little bit more, but I, I wish my average was 14 or $15 an hour. It's not. Uh, so that's a big one. The next one is environment. And if you're going to call yourself sustainable, you don't need to necessarily be organic. But boy, you better be careful what you spray and what you use in the way of fertilizers. Uh, and extremely sensitive to that. Uh, the third one is economics. They say you have to make money when you're farming. Not have to, but you should at least try and break even. Good years, bad years, it's okay. I think it's a 10 year kind of curve you look at. But we have a fourth one, and it is education. And those are my four E's. Education, including the secession of who's gonna be here next. So we ha do a lot of education out here. Um, and then you asked about water. Oh, uh, water. Next, oil. <laughs> if it's not already. Um, we have two wells on 300 acres. One well is 200 feet deep. The other well is about 300 feet deep. Um, they probably supply 10% mm, of our water use here. Maybe not even that much. One well is pretty salty, so the leasers don't want to use it. And the other well I use uh, solely. But then the other water uh, usage we have is metered water or water that's brought in. And it is brought in from a water company called United that gets its water from the Santa Clara River and then diverts it and either puts it in sand ponds to replenish aquifers or directs it to a pipeline to about 50, 60 farmers in the Oxnard Plains. And uh, you have to remember about 30 years ago, the state of California said, okay, Ventura County, you're pumping too much water. We're either gonna sue you or give you $10 million to start your program. Well, we went, hmm, what do we wanna do? Okay, we'll take the 10 million and start a program. And it was basically a property tax program where we came up with $10 million state gave us 10 million dollars and we started diverting more water having this system of replenishing aquifers below the soil and it's worked well however it's at its last leg now we have with new monitoring and um, water analysis they're finding that the seawater intrusion is still coming in because we're pumping so fast is that water thing uh, the diversion called the freeman diversion yes project? yes i live right next door Irrigate. Sometimes I smell a very uh, sulfuric smell. Sulfur water. Next yeah. The, the the well is going. The water is being depleted. And that's at the bottom. Yeah. Of the uh, you know, I just know that we don't have sulfur water here, and I know throughout the world you can have water with a lot of sulfur in it, or, and I know there's water around here. Typically, though, I would say that's well water, not water that's brought in from United. And it's someone using well water. And what's great about sulfur, it's not a bad thing. Uh, it's not like salts, like sodium and chlorides. Those are what are bad. 
And I know exactly what you mean. It smells pretty bad, but it doesn't hurt anything as far as I know. Actually, I think sulfur is good for the soil. I think it lowers the pH, if I'm not mistaken. There's such a demand for water from the forest. Has any thought been given to building a desalinization? Well, Oxnard just, yeah, Oxnard is doing that. And they're also taking uh, water that's high content brine from Cayagas Creek and turning it into gray water and putting it back into the ground to keep the. Uh, seawater intrusion at bay um, but yeah Bob why don't we have I mean that may be that is uh, I guess they're still very 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 expensive to do but oh yeah it's all about the cost now we're gonna talk sustainability this county has about 12,000 acres of strawberries. Strawberries use more water, more pesticides, and more labor than any other crop. And we've been doing this, well, I'm gonna say 30 years ago is probably half of that. But in the last 10 years, it's, we are at our max. It's not sustainable. We won't be able to supply these strawberry growers with water. They won't be able to keep spraying the tons of pesticides they keep spraying. And um, I, I mean, you know, the ag community in this county uh, will be the first to admit, I think they just did a survey, 80% of our labor source in California is uh, undocumented labor. So it's just not sustainable and it's just not gonna stay this way. Something's gonna change. I'm not gonna say we all have to go back to dry farming. Dry farming is farming with the winter rains and, and growing only what you can grow. But there will be rationing. It's just a matter of time. And it'll either be forced or it'll be economically. Um, you know, in San Diego County, there's growers that pay up to $1,400 per acre foot for their water. Here, we pay $80. So, yeah, it's going to change. Uh, and actually, we're getting some big increases. Um, but it's definitely going to change. And when it does, people aren't going to afford to grow strawberries. They're such a huge water user. Um, and plus, there's a lot more community uh, saying, we're done with these strawberries. You know, it's just that's what the Oxnard Plains is. Well, you know, is the price? Three days a week, two hours a day. Yeah, strawberries, like I said, are the highest water users. Yeah. They like sandy soil. Um, they don't like to be wet, but they like a lot of water. So figure that one out. That's why they do well in sandy soil. They don't like to sit in mud, I should say. Yeah. Try this that one. one. Yeah, that's a nice one. Oh, thank you. Go ahead and so fix it. The, the, the plastic is yeah. mainly to keep the weeds down, but also to keep the fruit off the dirt. If the fruit sat in the dirt, it would mold. And get old. Yeah, that's what happens at home. It's, it's, yeah, yeah. And yeah. Then, and then the squirrel comes well, then a squirrel or a worm or yeah, a bird. So you are growing strawberries. Good for you. Uh, yeah, I have a little. Yeah. Some boxes at home. Do you know what kind they are? I have no idea. Uh huh. You can't imagine how many squirrels and rabbits we have out here. It's out of control. This is a salad bar for them. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, it's a problem. How do you tell the difference between uh, a Driscoll strawberry? And there's so many names I get Yeah, all yeah, exactly. Um, well, my strawberries are typically smaller. Uh, these are, here, these are seascapes. Um, but these are... Uh, a berry that are typically smaller, pretty sweet. I have to tell you, they picked these yesterday. That's why there's not that many red ones out here. But a strawberry plant typically produces new fruit every three weeks. So we pick three or four times a week, um, and uh, obviously you can see it. It starts with uh, this flower. Then the petals fall off, 
and the fruit comes out in the middle. There's a future strawberry right there. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. And then it turns into this, which eventually turns into this. So the flower is the strawberry. And well, and the, the only way to pick them is hand pick them. Though. Oh, yeah. Yeah, well, unless you're... I think they have a machine. No, no, they don't. Strawberries are all on hand pick. I don't think they have machine strawberry picking yet. There's a good one. It's hiding. <laughs> You're welcome. Peppers. Yeah. <laughs> have you ever patted a chicken before? Uh, yeah. But have I you? Have yeah. Pepper's like, we got a rooster in there, but Pepper tells the rooster what to do. It, she is like the alpha female, the white one, the solid white one. Oh no, where is the white one? Oh, he's over there, I think. You know, what's the story with French people? All the French chicken and the French duck both have like these special hairdos because they're French or what the heck? <laughs> uh, so why do you have chickens on the ranch? You know, this is all about the history. I love talking about. I mean, my dad grew up on a dairy. There were chickens, there were pigs, there were goats, there were lots and lots of cows, and lots of cattle. Let me let me show this little girl. Some good folks there, huh? Where's that? Victoria? Yeah, that's, that's um, basically, if I had my way, I want to turn this farm into a giant educational facility uh, to educate the importance of agriculture. And I want us to be more sustainable in every aspect. I'd love to grow, like I said earlier, my own seeds. Uh, I'd love to have a, a market or some sort of distribution facility here. Um, definitely love to have a... Uh, some type of housing, youth hostel, educational facility here. And then a really cool restaurant. <laughs> Keep saying, it, yeah, everybody wants to go to a restaurant. Yeah, of course. But it is all about education, like anything. It's always going to be that. And we're trying to grow the right way. The way a lot of this stuff is the way we used to farm. And uh, it, to me, it is about taking three steps back to go one step forward. Okay. Have a good one. See you then.